Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Dennis, and I practice in Atlanta, Georgia at Peach Valley Dental. And today I'm going to talk about what to expect during an extraction. First of all, a lot of times people find themselves in the dental office because they're in pain. Pain is significant, and the treatment of that pain sometimes is the removal or the extraction of the tooth. What to expect? The first thing that you can anticipate is getting out of the pain. That will be the very first thing that will happen. And a lot of people are anxious about that part because it does involve an injection. But I like to tell my patients the amount of discomfort that you will receive during an injection does not compare to the amount of pain that you have experienced prior to coming to the office. And the reason that the pain medication that people have either prescription or over the counter isn't working is because there is an infection involved as well. Infections are treated with a different medication, usually an antibiotic. Whatever fear and anxiety you have about the procedures themselves, remember that our goal is to make you as comfortable as possible so that you have none of the pain that you've had prior to coming in. So again, the first step will be anesthesia or the injection of anesthesia in the area so that you can be comfortable throughout the procedure. Now, what that medication does once it's injected is it makes you numb. And numbing can present itself almost like tingling. We like to be able to let patients identify certain areas because we're not numbing the whole mouth. We're numbing the area of insult, the area that we're working with, the tooth that's going to be removed. And so it's only that area that will be made numb. So a lot of times we get patients in the chair and they say, I can still feel it. Well, we don't usually numb your whole tongue. So <laughs> the tooth's still there and your tongue's still there. So yeah, you're going to feel your tooth until it's being removed. But there are certain landmarks in certain areas that we can test to, to verify that a tooth has been adequately anesthetized. Now, keep in mind, everybody's body is different. So some people may require less anesthesia. Some people might require more. The responsibility of the patient and the doctor is to determine what your level of anesthesia is, profound anesthesia, because the goal is, our goal is not to hurt you. It's to provide the experience with, as, with the least amount of trauma and sensitivity that's possible. Okay, so that's the first step. Once profound anesthesia has been achieved, then it's about removing the tooth. Now, I like to tell patients that these teeth were put in divinely. <laughs> they were meant to last to the end. God is way better at that than any of us ever could be. So that unless a tooth has some issues that have made it mobile or loose, that tooth is going to be in there. It may be broken, it may have a hole in it, but it's stable because it was meant to last. So what you should experience or you're going to experience is pressure. Heavy pressure. And I like to tell people that you need to be able to differentiate between pressure and pain. Because pain I can control. Pressure and noise I cannot. So 
Once we've established profound anesthesia, pressure, one, two, three, you're out. Now, sometimes there are complications that arise where a tooth or the clinical crown, which is the portion of the tooth that you can see in the mouth, breaks. And so we have to retrieve the remaining portion of the tooth, which is the roots, which are embedded in bone. And sometimes that requires what's called a surgical procedure where minimal amount of bone is removed and the roots are re retrieved. At no time is it acceptable that parts of the tooth are left in the mouth because they can become a remaining source of infection. So we've gotten the tooth out. Now, what do we do? Uh, sometimes depending on how much tissue or bone needed to be removed to re remove that tooth, sutures may be required or stitches. Most of the time they are resorbable, which means as the healing occurs, the sutures will dissolve on their own. But most simple extractions do not require sutures and the tissue will heal up on its own with the proper care. That's where the, po the post-op instructions come in. What you're going to do after leaving the office is you're, you're leaving the office with some gauze placed over the extraction site. You're going to be biting down on that gauze for at least 30 minutes. I like to tell patients, go get your prescriptions. Once you get home, you can take the gauze out. If you see blood coming from the area, where you're, you'll be given some extra gauze to bite down on. It's the pressure that stops the bleeding. I also add a little, if you're talking on your phone in the car on the way to get to the prescription to get home, you're gonna be ble bleeding when you get home. <laughs> so pressure is the key. Once you get home and you don't have any bleeding, you take your medication, which is meant to keep you covered from being numb so that there's not a period where you're experiencing soreness because it's hard, harder to recover to have that medication kick in once you're already sore. So the goal is numbness, medication for at least the next 24 hours so that you're comfortable. There is nothing post-operatively that you should experience that was like before you came into the chair. You're going to experience soreness, however. Soreness is something that we can't eliminate. You just had surgery. <laughs> and a lot of people forget that. They forget that if they're not in an operating table with a general anesthesia that they don't consider it surgery. It is surgery. So your body is going to take some time to heal. Soreness is expected in the mouth only around the area where you had the tooth removed. Maybe in the areas where you had the injections placed. But other than that, as the days progress, the soreness should lessen. With the help and the aid of the medication and warm salt water rinses, and most importantly, keeping the area as clean as you can, healing should be seamless. So let's get to the nitty gritty. How much is this gonna cost me? Now, most of the time, if a patient has insurance, the insurance will cover a portion or a percentage of the fee. That varies. So. We can't talk about specifics on that, but know that if you have insurance, most insurance will cover a portion or percentage of that fee. Now, what is that fee? It's gonna vary across the country, but usual and customary for a simple or surgical extraction can vary anywhere from 200 to $300 per tooth. So then your insurance if you have it, we'll cover a percentage, maybe 50 to 80% of that procedure. After you've had adequate healing in that area where the tooth was removed, 
you want to have the conversation with your dental provider regarding replacement of that missing tooth. Whenever you're missing something, you want to replace it if possible for aesthetic reasons in terms of how your mouth looks. For function, you want to still be able to chew and have balanced occlusion. And for spacing, because teeth have a tendency to shift when they're missing. Some of the replacement options are a removable denture, a fixed bridge, or an implant. All of those would be suitable choices for the replacement of this missing tooth. Now you know what to expect when you go get your tooth pulled. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. If you have a comment, I want to hear what you have to say. Put it down below. And thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Kelly Dennis in Atlanta, Georgia at Peach Valley Dental. Now you know what to expect when you get a tooth pulled. <laughs> now. <laughs> now pause. Now you know what to expect when you're.